for the word. That's the recorder going on. We're going to turn to God's precious word tonight. And I have a very familiar story on my heart tonight from the word of God, one you will be familiar with, but we're going to deal with it tonight. And it's from Luke's gospel record and from chapter 19. Luke's Gospel Record, chapter 19, and we're going to read the first 10 verses. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of a short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Luke, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's just pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we rejoice in you tonight that in Christ we can have everlasting life. We rejoice, Lord, that in Christ there is no condemnation. And we realize that when we know Christ as Savior, then there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Lord, it's our earnest prayer and our heart's desire that tonight you would meet with us in this place. And that, Lord, even someone here tonight would know that wonderful experience of everlasting life. We pray tonight that, Lord, a heart would be changed by your Holy Spirit and experience eternal life. Will you help me, Lord, in the preaching and delivery of your word? Bring thoughts new and old to refresh us and to help us. And I pray, Lord, this morning, this evening, rather, that hearts will be touched for eternity and your name glorified. We pray these things in our Saviour's name. Amen. The theme of our message tonight is a very solemn one. A very solemn theme because I want to preach to you tonight on the theme of a last opportunity to be saved. And our text is found in the verse 1 that we read together. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And when we look into this story that is recorded there, we discover that for the man in the story, this was his last opportunity to be saved. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, and in verse 3, God says, my spirit 
shall not always strive with man. Now, we've just come out of the year 2022. And sadly for some, it's been a year of rejecting Christ. It's been a year when we've lifted up the fists of our hearts in rebellion against God and said, no God, not for me. Maybe 2022 has been a year where you once knew Christ as your saviour, you once followed him, but somehow it's been a year of no church, little time for God, when you said, God, it's not for me. And you know, as we're in 2023, it would be a tragedy to go through this year in that same spiritual condition. And it is vitally important that the beginning of this year that we lay hold upon eternal life, because who knows that this year, even this day, could be a last opportunity to get saved. Now, the Bible identifies this man, Zacchaeus, as being referred to as a sinner because they murmured against Jesus and they said he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Even the sinners in society identified that. And that day he had his encounter with Christ. If it had not taken place that day, it would never have taken place. It was a last opportunity to be saved. Therefore, tonight, folks, it will be vitally important if you followed his example and came and received Christ joyfully. Now, this day was a very important day in this man's life. Because that particular day, he encountered a change that would change his whole life forever. And there would never be another day like that day. Because that day, God in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, came across his pathway and stepped into that man's life and changed his life forever. And that being the case, nothing could and nothing was ever the same for that man again. You must remember, folks, that this night is an important one here in Leyland Pentecostal Church. Not just because we're celebrating Barbara Belfield's 90th birthday and we're celebrating Jack and Carol's um, retirement and giving thanks to God for them. But you see, decisions could be made tonight that will affect and settle your destiny whether it's for heaven or whether it's for hell. Now, God in his word places great importance upon this day. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. And this that we've read tonight was this man's last opportunity to be saved. But the good news is that he laid hold upon that last opportunity 
And thank God he got gloriously saved. My friend, if this was your last opportunity to be saved, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to follow the example of Zacchaeus and come to the Savior? Or are you going to resist? And oh, what a danger there is, friends, in losing your soul. You see, it says in our text, then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. That's why it was a last day opportunity for that man to get saved. Now, as we look at this text tonight, there are three simple things that I want you to notice. I want you to notice, first of all, the concern in his soul because he wanted to see who Jesus was. And then I want you to see the call of the Savior, make haste and come down. And then I want us to see the change in that man's standing. He who had been identified as a great sinner is transformed and he has a standing with God. So first of all, let's consider his concern for his soul. The Bible says in verse 3, And he sought to see who Jesus was. And I wonder tonight, is that concern in your heart to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour? Now, we cannot ignore his attitude because, remember, he was a chief tax collector. Now, in those days, the tax collector was not, was in a class of people that never showed any concern or never showed any interest or any desire to meet with Christ or to know Christ. He would have had a notorious lifestyle and a sinful lifestyle. And yet, as a result of his notorious lifestyle, he would be amongst a group of people who was often isolated from the rest of the community, and he would live a very lonely life. It was a life where he would be cut off from other people because of the corruption that the tax collectors had in those days. They were really social outcasts. Because if you read the Bible, it says in verse 2, and he was rich. Now, there's nothing wrong in being rich if we're rich honestly. But you see, there was something wrong in this man being rich because he was rich dishonestly. That's why the other people identified him as a sinner because he was the kind of guy who would have wronged the average person. Tax collectors were classed as publicans, not people who kept a pub, necessarily, but the publicans, what they would do, they would buy off the government an area and they would take responsibility for collecting the taxes in that area. The government would set a particular tax level. But you see, the tax collector would go far above that. The government didn't care as long as they got what they had set for the tax. And so these tax collectors often became the enemies of society because of they were so corrupt in cheating people out of lots of money for their business. And yet the amazing thing is this, that a man with even such a reputation had a desire 
to see Jesus. He had an attitude that was not found amongst normal tax collectors. But you see the effort that he makes. Because the Bible says he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. He made every effort possible to make sure that on that occasion he would see the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, folks, you must always keep in mind that salvation is not by any works of our own. The Bible says it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to God's mercy, he saves us. And yet I believe it's, it's, it's uh, good for people to put themselves in a place where they can meet with the Lord. And that's exactly what happened to Zacchaeus. He put himself in a place where he would be able to see and to meet with the Lord. And that's why it's important, friends, even in attendance of God's house, even to the preaching of God's word, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what a day that was, because the Bible tells in verse 5 that Jesus came to the place. Folks, I don't believe for one minute that it was by chance that Jesus came to the place. I believe it was divine appointment. And when it says Jesus came to the place, it says he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. But you see, what the Bible tells this, that Jesus saw him. And you know what a solemn truth it is, that Christ sees each one of us tonight. Folks, he knows the very thoughts and the intents of our heart. He knows the very number of hairs upon our heads. I've not got many, by the way. But friends, there's nothing that he doesn't know. There's nothing that he doesn't see. And that day he saw this man because it says when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. And I wonder, friend, how does Jesus see you tonight? Does he see you in his son, saved by grace? Or does he see you in your sin, condemned because of sin? But more than that, Jesus not only saw him, but you know this man must have realized that while Jesus, uh, he had this desire, this concern to see the Savior, that when Jesus stopped and looked up to him, he said to him, Zacchaeus. You see, not only did he realize that Jesus has actually seen me, but more than that, Jesus knows me. He's called me by my name. And that's how it is, folks. He not only sees us tonight. He not only sees us either in our sin without a savior or in his son saved by grace. But more than that, he knows every one of us in this room tonight by name. For Jesus said, Zacchaeus. And there was even a further truth because Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must stay at your house. Not only did Jesus see him, not did only he realize that Jesus knew him, but now he realized that Jesus wanted him. Because he was calling him. He's saying, 
Zacchaeus, come down. And folks, tonight, this is the glorious truth that Jesus Christ sees every one of us, that Jesus Christ knows us all by name. In fact, he knows you tonight better than you know yourself. But the wonderful thing is that the Savior wants each one of us to put our trust in him. And what he wanted this man to do, he said, come down, make haste and come down. I must stay at your house. Friends, Christ wants to make your life and my life an absolutely transformed life. Tonight, he wants you to be a son of the living God. He wants to live and abide at your house. And maybe, just maybe, in the past, he's called you, but you didn't hear. Maybe he's called you and you didn't listen. Maybe he's called you and you didn't heed. Friends, don't let this be another year when you refuse to hear. Don't let it be another year when you refuse to heed and turn your back on Christ. Friends, I trust that there is some concern in your soul about the matter of salvation. Notorious and sinful as he was, there was a concern in his soul to see the Savior. But not only was there a concern in his soul, secondly, there was the call of the Savior. Look what it says again in verse 5. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. You know, here's the good news, folks, that in spite of this man's sin, in spite of him being notoriously a wrongdoer, yet the Lord Jesus Christ still spoke to him. In spite of his sin, the Lord still wanted him. And that day was very important because Jesus said, today I must stay at your house. He didn't say today I might stay. He didn't say I might come tomorrow. He said today I must stay at your house. And that ties in with our text because in verse 1 it said then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. You see, Zacchaeus must meet with Christ that day. That's why I said it was a last opportunity for that man to be saved. It was a vital day. There was an urgency in that day. And folks, tonight there is an urgency about your soul's salvation. There may never be another night like this one for someone in our gathering. Maybe you'll never hear that call again. And certainly there wasn't going to be another day for Zacchaeus like that one. That was his lost, last opportunity to be saved. You see, folks, tonight you must realize that salvation is a must. Today, Jesus said, I must abide at your house. It's not optional. It's imperative. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given under heaven, given among men, by which we must be saved. People call it coming to faith. They call it all sorts of silly names these days. The Bible calls it being saved. There is no other name by which men must be saved. Jesus said to Nicodemus, 
you must be born again. And Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today I must come to your house. Friends, there was something about that day that Jesus was emphasizing. This day, because Jesus was entering and passing through Jericho. That's why it was a must that day. You see, it was visitation day for that man. Now, folks, let me say to you, every day is not a visitation day spiritually. God often speaks to people's hearts, striving by his Holy Spirit. But where there is continual resistance, then as we read in our text, he entered and passed through. Jesus is passing this way tonight. And if this happened to be his last visit, you need the concern that Jesus that he had to see Christ and to realize that Christ is calling you tonight to himself. Why was it his last opportunity to be saved? Couldn't it have been saved tomorrow? But friends, as I say, Jesus passed through Jericho. Jesus said to the man, today, today, I must stay at your house. And you know, friends, on that particular occasion, the situation is this. Jesus was on a journey. And that journey took him through Jericho. But he was on a journey up to Jerusalem and up to the cross. In other words, Jesus wasn't coming back that way through Jericho. If my understanding of scripture is right, the conversion of Zacchaeus, other than the thief, the dying thief on the cross, but the conversion of Zacchaeus is the last recorded conversion before Jesus was nailed to the cross of Calvary, with the exception, as I say, of the dying thief. That's why it was a last opportunity to be saved. That's why it was that man's visitation day and his opportune moment. And friends, if he hadn't taken hold of that opportunity, he would have been shut out and would have been lost forever. Thank God it was a victory day in his life because it tells us in our back text, so he made haste and came down and received Christ joyfully. And what a mighty transformation was to take place. You know, if you're here in this gathering tonight, if you listen to this message on the church channel when it goes out, if you're backslidden in heart, and remember the Bible says the backslider is full of his own ways. Tonight, friends, you need to grasp the opportunity that God is giving you. Because while God is giving you an opportunity, it could be the last opportunity for you to be saved. Remembering that Jesus entered and passed through. Remembering that Jesus said to the man today, you see, tomorrow would have been too late. And remembering that God says in his word, my spirit shall not always strive with man. The old hymn writer said this in one of the verses of his hymn. There is a line by us unseen that crosses every path. A hidden boundary between God's patience and God's wrath. Jesus is passing this way today. And he says to this man, I must abide. Jesus, Zacchaeus heeded the call of the Savior. But quickly, let me just come to my third point, the change of his standing. 
you remember, his standing in society wasn't great. In fact, when the community heard of it, they said of Jesus, he's gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. And that was sinners saying that. But you see, Zacchaeus was known for particular sins. But friends, on the day he received Christ joyfully, his whole status and his standing changed because he heard the Saviour's call. And folks, Jesus is calling you tonight. And he calls you maybe through situations, through circumstances, both in society, both in our homes, in our families. And he calls us through the preaching of the word. He calls us through the written word. You know, there were many things that could have hindered this man from coming to Christ. His position in society could have hindered him. His pride could have hindered him. And you know, friends, pride has the letter I in the middle. And pride is very often the thing that hinders us. But thank God he didn't let those things stand as a barrier. He didn't care what other people would say or think. Yes, he was a great and notorious sinner, but thank God, God's grace was greater than that man's sin. Hallelujah. And it says he made haste and come down and received Christ joyfully. Tonight you need to come with haste and received the Saviour joyfully. There was no delay. He didn't put it off till another day. And not only that, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, oh, friends, he made restitution. Lord, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, which he had, he said, I restore fourfold. Hallelujah. What a change. But you see, the wonderful thing is this, that Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. This man is a son of Abraham, a man who had a last opportunity to be saved. But thank God he got saved. Jesus said, him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And look what Jesus said at the end of the 10th verse. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save. That's that word again. To save that which was lost. Zacchaeus received Christ. What will you do with Jesus? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you know the thoughts, the intents of every heart laid before you. I pray tonight, Lord, that maybe someone in this gathering doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. I pray tonight they will receive Christ joyfully. I pray, Lord God, that every one of us would have that desire to meet with Christ. And I pray, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, that you would strive with us till we yield to thee. I pray tonight, Lord God, that salvation will come to hearts and to lives. And that, Lord, tonight, folks will grasp that opportunity to come in repentance to the Saviour, to come and ask forgiveness through the blood of the cross, that they might be saved and leave this house with the gift of everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen.
We are going to close with a hymn. I make no apologies for choosing this hymn. It's a very old hymn. We haven't sang it for a good few years, but I make no apology. 